somebody put a lot of thought and effort into creating this um, flyer or image on state computers, state employees on state time. Boston. Remember that time your mom realized you used that $20 bill she gave you on beer instead of rent? Me neither. That's kind of like what the TABC has been doing with taxpayer funds. Oh, that and sort of impersonating officers. Busted. All right, we begin with a story that caught our eye last week and proceeded to blow up like Krypton. Now it's resulted in yesterday's sudden retirement of an agency director. Yep, turns out the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission has been taking some trips, using some cars, losing some cars, and even getting some guns all on the taxpayer's dime. Or in this case, thousands and thousands of taxpayer dimes. This all started when the Texas Tribune's Jay Root stumbled upon this photo, shop picture, of TABC director Sherry Cook and some co-workers. It was made in-house and signifies the group's excitement for the 2015 National Conference of State Liquor Administrators. It went a little deeper than that, though. Turns out the TABC has shelled out roughly $85,000 on out-of-state travel since 2011, with most going to liquor industry conferences, which have been held in Hawaii, Atlantic City, and Florida, don't want to skip when it comes to resorts with day spas and sunset luau's now, do we? We're not even counting the nearly $50,000 spent on dues and in travel for in-state events in San Antonio and Austin. No, all this excitement and corruption got the TABC party squad, as I like to refer to them as, called in for a House committee hearing on general investigation and ethics last week. And that's when it got even shadier. Turns out Director Cook and Executive Director Ed Swedberg were trained as peace officers, even though their jobs did not require it. What it did get them is hazardous duty pay, which Cook received while in Hawaii. I can only assume the dangers associated with the limbo contest were hazardous back in 2013. They also received take-home vehicles, free gas, and weapons, including an assault rifle. Oh, being a peace officer also bumps up pension benefits after so many years. Lawmakers went on to ask about Cook's mysterious 2008 Impala that became a newer model SUV, cars that were registered to employees that had not been with the agency for years, and reimbursement payments uh -huh, from the alcohol industry. Cook announced her retirement on Monday, and it might not be the end of the shakeup. A bipartisan proposal was attached as an amendment to a budget bill that impacts the current fiscal year. It bars most out-of-state trips by the agency and restricts its use of money from outside groups that are funded by the liquor industry. Yay! The amendment also passed unanimously. Good job, guys. Now that we've got that under control, looks like the party's over. Who wants to grab a beer and look at the records of some other state agencies? Eh? Well, we had some rain across East Texas today and still got some going on out there as we take a look outside right now, though. Uh, no rain right at the studio, 78 degrees the current temperature, but you can see the clouds there off in the distance and some showers not too far away. As we take a look at what's been going on across Texas, uh, showers and thunderstorms developed near the upper Texas coast earlier today. They began to move northward and made their way into deep east Texas this morning, and that's where the heaviest activity was early, down around generally the Lufkin vicinity, but that continued to move on to the north, and right now the heaviest activity is north of I-20, especially up into Cass County, where we've got some thunderstorms. No severe weather, and this activity will be dying down as the sun goes down because we'll lose this daytime heating, which pushed temperatures actually into the lower 80s at times and right now has most of East Texas in the 70s. Over the next seven days we got some sunshine coming up on Thursday and most of Friday. We'll have some thunderstorms Friday night and Saturday. Some of those could be strong, maybe even severe. After that though it gets drier and cooler, Brian. Thank you much, John. Well, kids like to climb on furniture and it can often lead to an accident. Every two weeks a child dies when furniture tips over on top of them. Scary. But there are some easy ways to make sure they stay safe. Here's producer John Burnley. Let's face it, the world is a dangerous place. Around every corner there's a situation that could potentially kill you if you're not paying enough attention. Sure, you may feel safe in the comfort of your own home, but you probably shouldn't be too complacent, especially when it comes to small, unsupervised, adventurous children who already see the world as their own personal jungle gym. It's the shocking video that's been viewed millions of times. 
two-year-old twin brothers Bodie and Brock playing on their dresser when the unthinkable happens. The 100-pound dresser tips over, pinning Brock. His brother spends two minutes trying to nudge him free. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, someone is injured in a furniture tip-over accident every 15 minutes. 33,000 injuries are treated in the emergency room. We can see skull fractures, we can see brain bleeds, and then we can see serious brain injuries that are serious enough to cause either permanent um, disability or even death. Do most parents realize the hazard they have in their home? Often they don't, no. Kimberly Finkbeiner runs Baby Proofing Pittsburgh. To prevent tip overs, make sure you secure furniture to the wall with heavy duty nylon straps. Basically, they go two per piece of furniture into studs in the wall and then to the back of the furniture. You should remove TVs and remote controls from the top of all dressers, along with any tempting items that might encourage kids to climb. We see this as a bookcase. For a child, what do they see? They see, oh, lots of fun things that are shiny and that I might want to play with. So let me go get them. And make your furniture bottom heavy. Load dressers with heavy items in the bottom drawers and light items up top. A majority of tip over accidents involve television sets. Experts say it's important to have them on furniture that is low to the ground and stable. Secure the TV to the furniture or have the television mounted on the wall. For The Edge, I'm producer John Burnley. Thank you, John. A recommendation to keep your children safe, head to the Consumer Product Safety Commission website and go to the Tip Over Information Center. You will find information about the new education program called Anchor It. It is a public education campaign to prevent furniture and TV tip overs from killing and seriously injuring children. Good advice there. And feel free to give us a recommendation that you think we should share with East Texas. You can always get our attention with the hashtag EdgeNation. Well, an Arizona police department shared photos from the swearing in of its newest and most unusual officer, a drug sniffing lizard. Iroh is a bearded dragon that first came to the Avondale Police Department last year as part of a pilot program. He was officially sworn in last week by the chief of police. The department said Iroh was brought in after officials learned reptiles have a strong enough sense of smell to make them more effective than dogs at detecting, well, some types of narcotics. Experts say reptiles possess that strong sense of smell, making their ability to detect certain illicit drugs possibly more accurate than canine officers. <laughs> Never thought I'd do that story. Coming up, another inspiring tale that producer Libby found. It's about a family living one day at a time, literally. We don't have a good outlook for later, but, you know, tomorrow looks great. Tonight, meet Tejas, an amazing little boy who will make you think twice the next time you decide to start complaining about the, the small stuff. Don't sweat it. We're back. Thanks for watching on Facebook Live. This, I guess it's after 6.30. Uh, you you kind of get lost, yeah, day and, and night. You never know when it's dark here. So good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in tonight. 
And thanks for watching on Facebook Live. I'm just logging in right now, uh, checking in. And first, I want to say thanks for the thumbs up, Johnny. And feel free to leave your comments. Anything you'd like to talk about, like to leave, if you want to be a smart aleck, feel free to be a smart aleck. And uh, I'll try to get back to you either on here or through talking to you right here on Facebook Live. Thanks, everybody. we got about a minute till we're back. April is Autism Awareness Month. One in every 68 children in the United States have this disorder. Right now, a boy in Austin continues to fight for his life through multiple hurdles. Jay Wallace has his story. I'd like to tell you about Tay's story. He's so silly and such a joy to everyone. Tejas Clinton was born with autism, but now as a 12-year-old, this young man has plenty of energy. Wendy LeSage is Tejas's teacher, and you could say these two get along. I love you. Say I love you more. I love you more. <laughs> but the next chapter in Tejas's story caught everyone by surprise. It went from zero to 120 in about two days. A swelling above his knee turned out to be a tumor. He had cancer. You feel like you're not ever gonna smile again. And because of Tejas' autism, his limb couldn't be salvaged. It would have to be removed. We were really terrified how we were gonna, what we were gonna do to teach him that they were gonna take his leg. So Tejas' teacher came up with this book, showing him how and why he now has one leg. Do you remember? <laughs> you had a boo-boo. And yes, Tejas may be nonverbal, but he understands more than you think. To be honest, he doesn't miss his leg. It hurt him. He knows that that's what was wrong, and um, he's okay. He's more worried about losing his favorite teacher. He'll leave me now because he's going to go to middle school. <gasps> <Ooh>. <laughs> and while Tejas' mom says she has her good days and bad days, she says Tejas has remained the same crazy kid, no matter his state. Here he is, an 11-year-old in a wheelchair with no hair, one leg, I couldn't care less. And Teos' battle isn't over. The cancer has now returned, this time in his lungs. It's bad. It's not good. But Teos' story isn't over either, and it never will be. This kid has a huge heart and has a mother who will never give up on him, no matter what the next page brings. We don't have a good outlook for later, but, you know, tomorrow looks great. <laughs> and that's how we have to just live our life. Tejas is working with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and will be getting his wish granted later this month. His room is going to be transformed with new flooring and furniture. His ceiling will be turned into a solar system. His mom says anything connected to outer space makes him smile. That makes us smile too. Coming up in your Edge Pet segment, from problem pups to patriot paws, meet a dog with an important mission. What it takes to train man's best friend to comfort wounded veterans in two shakes. Just call on me, brother, when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on. Lean on me. When you're hey, not strong. Tuning in, everybody. Appreciate you catching us here on Facebook Live. If you can't catch us on the telly, <laughs> what, I'm British or something, uh, just catch us right here on Facebook Live. We do appreciate all the comments that we get coming in. Some of them come right onto the site here. This is what I figured out, that uh, you can comment right here on the Facebook 
live, but I also get some stuff afterwards. And I was like, where's the stuff coming from? Well, you, you're commenting in different sections where you're just hitting notifications. I don't know how that works. I'm not Mark Zuckerberg, but we appreciate all the comments and the nice things you have to say. Every once in a while, we'll get uh, somebody being a smart aleck. Our resident troll, Linda, she says she doesn't watch, but she comments like every day. So, hi, Linda. <laughs> While well, becoming a military service dog takes discipline, patience, and confidence, and not every dog has what it takes. But some North Texas college students are working hard to make potential service dogs the best they can be for the veterans that are going to serve. It was just a few short months ago. He's become a part of my weekly schedule. Human months, that is. He's so funny when he walks. That situations like these, with lots of strangers and lots of action, he looks good. Would have scared this two-year-old yellow lab named Drillbit. Well, he was just fearful and uncertain about new situations. That was an issue because Drillbit is training to become a military service dog through Patriot Paws, an organization out of Rockwall that provides veterans with service dogs at no cost to them. But after seven months of intensive training, Drillbit is back on the straight and narrow. His future as a service dog no longer in jeopardy. He's made a lot of progress and he's doing really well. Drillbit's progress is the product of a new partnership between Patriot Paws and behavioral analysis students at UNT. So we've been taking some of the Patriot Paws dogs who are ha maybe have developed some minor behavior issues. The students are then able to assess the behavior and come up with a training plan, a huge help to Patriot Paws. So we wanted to make him more confident so that he would be able to serve his veteran in the best way possible. Alyssa Schmidt and Jessica Winnie were among the students who trained Drillbit using positive reinforcement only. As Drillbit's learning, I'm learning too. And so it's a really rewarding experience to be able to learn, but also in a way that is going to help someone in the future. And now one more veteran will get help thanks to the help these students gave to Drillbit. For months, us media folks have been tripping over ourselves to get you to click the headline or banner and stare for hours at a giraffe that's been about to give birth. Well, now that it's happened, I'll look at all of the many reasons that giraffes hate us. It's coming up. Well, it all amounts to nothing in the air, yeah, yeah. Well, it all amounts to nothing in the air, in the end. You see it, I, 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 I want to worry my life away. Not me, oh, see, not today. In a I wanna worry my life away. I'm sure everybody loves that. Not only dancing in the breaks, but you get my terrible singing. Aren't you lucky? Good for you guys. 
At least I know it's terrible singing. If I thought it was good, I'd be like one of those uh, people who went on uh, American Idol and thought they were actually good. And then they were crushed when Simon was like, you're absolutely horrible, horrific, the worst singing voice I've ever had. And then they cried. Like, at least I know I'm bad. So if I did that, I'd be like, well, you're right, Simon. But Paul Abdul, you're kind of cute. You know, that's what I would have done. Clay Aiken, yeah. I sound just like Clay Aiken. Sure, Libby. No, 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 no. I want to worry my life away. Oh, no, 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 there's no need to hurry, love, when I'm making up my mind. Well, you can turn off the sun, but I'm still gonna shine. Well, tens of millions of Americans were transfixed by the defining stories of 2017. The Russian meddling in the election? <laughs> of course not. The threat of ISIS terrorists? Can't be bothered. America is instead enthralled by the reproductive functions of a single giraffe before a live audience of more than a million YouTube viewers. April the giraffe delivered what many had waited weeks to see. And tonight, from our Denver station, why giraffes hate us. First off, at this point, the giraffe video feed is just a commercial for Toys R Us. There's a logo in the corner that we'd have to show you, so we're not going to use it. Just stock photos instead. Giraffes like April. Please note, some of these may be male giraffes. I can't tell the difference. But click-hungry media outlets are counting on everybody not being able to tell the difference between a giraffe that's about to give birth and one that might be a few weeks away. U.S. Magazine. Pregnant April the giraffe has notable bulges on her side. What does that mean? She's pregnant. Britain's Express. Zookeepers get excited as April has significant mammary change. Show me one other socially acceptable use of the phrase significant mammary change. Eight on your side's doing a little investigative journalism. The difference between labor in humans and giraffes. I would bet one difference is that a baby giraffe comes out. April looks large. April the giraffe's belly growth is mind blowing. Baby is sticking out. And the headline to end all headlines. Zookeepers say April agitated as giraffe baby watch continues. Why do you suppose that is, folks? This is why they hate us. All right, good stuff. Funny stuff, at least. Coming up, a beverage company with a clear goal. Yeah, a solution for coffee lovers afraid of staining their teeth. You're not going to believe this. See how it works on the other side of the break. You know my mistakes.
The first colorless coffee drink in the world, no kidding. Slovakian brothers did away with the color of coffee as well as extraneous vowels. Clear cough, or it's spelled C-L-R-C-F-F. It lists only water, coffee, and caffeine as ingredients. I thought coffee was brown. The first colorless coffee in the world. This special drink is made of high quality, fresh roasted Arabica coffee beans and pure water. It's produced by methods which have never been used before. Due to this combination of technology and high quality ingredients, a drink has been developed which is unique in taste and flavor. During the production, we do not use any preservatives, artificial flavors, stabilizers, sugar or sweeteners. Clear coffee has only two calories per 100 milliliters. Because it does not contain any fat or sugar, you can enjoy this refreshing drink without regrets. I think I'm gonna stick with my coffee and just brush my teeth a lot. The creators say the production method based on physical processing and doesn't include any chemicals. Right now, clear coffee only available in Britain and Slovenia. Uh, if you got some cool video to send us, just uh, head to our Twitter page, at the Edge CBS 19 There we are. A reminder now about Super Shredder Day. We'll be shredding tomorrow in Longview and Thursday in Tyler. So mark your calendars tomorrow at 911 West Loop 281, the CBS 19 studio in Longview. And Thursday here in Tyler at Troop and the Loop. Our Tyler location will have electronics disposal too. There's a small disposal fee. TVs, monitors, and microwaves are five bucks each. The commercial provider disposal fee for electronics, eight dollars per item. Come on by. We'll be here for you on Super Shredder Day at both locations, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sounds like fun and destructive. That's our time for me, our resident shredder, producer Libby, and the entire Edge Nation crew. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same Edge place.